your General Electric. Here is Ronald Reagan. Good evening. Tonight it is my pleasure to appear with Kevin McCarthy on the General Electric Theater. And you'll see product reports that show how in the things that lead to a better life for us all. At General Electric, progress is our most important product. You know, if I were to draw a wall plan of yours or any kitchen, it'd probably look something like this. Cabinets, for instance, sinks, cupboards, they all have a clean, straight-edged look. Put in an old-fashioned, round-edged refrigerator, and it looks out of place. But General Electric announces a new concept in refrigerators, General Electric straight-line design. Straight-line design to fit flush with counters, base, and wall cabinets. Pretty great, isn't it? And with touch-action features, this new General Electric is just as appealing inside as outside. Touch and the revolving shelves bring all food out front. Touch and this big new roll-out freezer delivers five cubic feet of frozen food. And since the General Electric magnetic safety door has no latch, it helps protect your child from the danger of being locked inside. See this General Electric refrigerator freezer this week and live better electrically. One word for our situation, desperate. Deep in the Comanche hunting grounds at the small isolated outpost of Fort Johnson, my company, undermanned to begin with, had been under siege for three long days, completely surrounded by Bull Hunt's warriors. I'd lost count of the attacks we'd beaten off, but I knew the count of our growing casualties. And I knew the mood of the shrinking force of the men who were left. They were brave men, but even brave men are beaten finally by overwhelming numbers, by exhaustion, and by fear. With every hour, our chances lessened. We ain't gonna get out of here, how are we, Doc? I don't know, Dirty. <laughs> One more attack, look at the last... Oh, don't worry about it, just lie back and try and get some rest. Them heathens is the ones that's got it good. I'm penned up at no fort. You're outnumbered 10 to 1. I guess you can't complain. No. I don't want to die in this place. None of us do, Durfee. None of us do. Get up. They're not coming yet. I promise you I'll let you know as soon as you need it up there. Thanks. Don't worry. I'm... I'm glad for one thing now. What's that? They... They didn't let us bring the women out to this dome. <laughs> I... I... was punctured, there wasn't anything anybody could do. Doctor, he was right, wasn't he? Bob what? We are doomed, aren't we? I don't know, Sergeant. We make of it, Taney. Hasn't been a sign of him for more than an hour. They're still there, Captain. You can't see them, but they're there. Why are they taking so long? Might be making medicine. But unless I'm mighty mistaken, it's because that was Bull Hump's youngest son your sharpshooter picked off in that last flurry. You sure? 
Remember, Captain, I spent two winters with Bullhump. And that was his boy they carried away. God help us all. I only knew where Lieutenant Gill had gotten to with his platoon. But then we could stand them off. Well, Lieutenant Gill's a pretty savvy boy for a soldier. And he's got a good scout with him. Chances are he saw Bullhump first and lit out for help. I hope so. We can use all the help we can get. For a couple of days, anyway. Every man. How are the wounded? Thirteen return to duty, eight still down, three critical. Lieutenant Harper? Dead. Dead? Yes, sir. A few minutes ago. Tell me, Towns, did you cut off his leg? No, sir, Lieutenant Harper was hit in the chest. You're an army surgeon, aren't you? Since when do you look to see where a man is hit? What really happened, Towns? Did he die before you could amputate? Do I have the captain's permission to return to the wounded? You have the captain's permission to grab a gun and fight. Look around you, Towns. You still so concerned about the poor Indians? Tell me, Towns, do you think coddling would work on Bull Hump out there? Make him go away and leave us alone? I think fighting even with Bull Hump could have been averted if the Indians had been treated fairly and honestly. Fairly and honestly? He jumped us without warning or provocation in violation of the treaty. I wasn't referring to this action or to you personally. I meant originally. Oh, when will you ever learn? You're face to face with an enemy now. It's no longer a question of who's right or wrong, but who'll survive. And if you don't want your scalp hanging from Bullhump's scalp pole, you'd better get a gun and fight. I'm a doctor, Captain. You're afraid, Towns. That's what's really wrong with you. You're afraid to stand up and fight like a man. You make me sick. You and all the soft-talking people like you. The wounded need me, Captain. So did my brother at Shiloh, remember? When you got through with him, he needed a new leg. If I hadn't amputated, he would have died. And you'd have cut off my arm, too, wouldn't you? It was indicated. You were lucky. Lucky? I was lucky I had a gun to stop you. Go below, Downs. Why don't you say it? What gun? I'm too rough on towns, that it? Maybe, maybe not. Captain still on the rampage, sir? He's got a lot on his mind. Like that argument about how to treat the Indians. Well, I'm afraid that's one argument nobody's gonna win. Why? Bull hump out there. He isn't going to listen to any arguments. Riders coming. Man in position. Man in positions, man. On the wall. It's full on himself. What do you make of it, Taney? Oh, I want to talk. What does it mean? Well, right offhand, Captain, I'd say it ain't good. Whipped Indians don't talk. Better put a halter on your soldier boys, Captain. Some of them's liable to get impatient once this buck gets in range. Lock your pieces. No firing except on order. Lock your pieces. I'd better go down and talk to him. He don't speak much English. All right.
Is Lieutenant Gill, Captain? They got him. Alive? Yes. Him and 16 others. What does he want? The fort. Tell him no. They got Lieutenant Gill, Captain, and his men. What's left of them? We don't know that for sure. I've been tricked by Indians before. Lieutenant Gill. Lock your piece, as I said. One shot and they'd be butchered. Well, Cotton? It's Gill. Open the gate for Mr. Taney. Well, Captain, here's the way she is. They got Lieutenant Gill and 16 troopers. They'll give them back to us if we surrender the fort and clear out. If we don't? They'll cut them down one at a time, right here in front of our eyes. What'll I tell them, Captain? We leave the protection of the fort, surrender, and they massacre all of us as well as Gill's party. It's possible. That was Bull Hump's boy, Spotted Calf, we shot this morning. He's hurt bad, and it's the last son the old man's got. All the others swallowed army bullets. Gil. Well, if you had him here, you might be able to hold the fort until help comes. But without him, he'll burn you out in two days. And you know it, then. Do you think Bo Hump would honor surrender terms? Well, he put a lot of stock by them youngsters. He dreamed of uniting the Comanches, the Sioux, and the Apaches. But he's getting old now, and he counted on his sons to carry on. It's all over now. I don't look for no mercy, Captain. That doesn't leave me much choice. We'll defend the fort. They'll kill Gill and them boys, Captain, and they won't kill them fast. You have your orders, Mr. Taney. Towns! What are you doing out there? I heard everything you and Taney said. All your car bodies can't save Gill now, but maybe this can. Are you stark raving mad? Maybe. What do you got in mind, Doc? You said Bull Hump's boys hurt bad? I propose to treat him and heal him in exchange for Lieutenant Gill and his men. Well, you're crazy. You haven't even seen the wounds. You don't know how badly he's hurt. Do you know what'll happen to you if you treat him and he dies? Well, according to you, Captain, that would be no great loss. <laughs> Bull Hump's getting impatient, Captain. What'll I tell him? All right. 
Do what town says. Tell him his boy need not die today. Tell him the white man's medicine is strong and it can heal his son. But tell him that I will save his son only if he releases the prisoners. He says his people will cure a spotted calf. Tell him that his people did not cure his other sons. And tell him that he leaves his son to the squaws and the medicine men. The seed of Bull Hump will be lost forever to the Comanche. He says he'll let Lieutenant Gill go, but not the others. What do you think? Doc, I think you've got him on the run. I think we can get them all. All right. And tell him we're holding out for all the men or no trade. Chief will take it, but he's willing to talk. It's a Travis. And another. Probably the boy in one, the other will have large poles. And there's Lieutenant Gill and his men. Here comes Bill Hump. He wants a doc. He's ready for you, Doc. The sun's out there where you see him putting up the lodge. Good luck. Lieutenant Towns. Yes, sir. I want to say I... Nothing, Towns. That was Act One of A Question of Survival, starring Ronald Reagan and Kevin McCarthy. Now a word from General Electric on how to help you get rid of a backache. With all the groping, all the stooping, all the bending you have to do each day, why ask for more by getting an old-fashioned chest freezer that lies down on the job? The freezer for you is the new upright General Electric, this 18-cubic-foot bookshelf freezer. It lets you select frozen foods as easily as taking books off a shelf. There's twice as much food in sight and right at your fingertips. Even the odd-shaped packages come out with ease. What could be more convenient? And there are six freezing surfaces, not just four cold walls. And it stores as much as 640 pounds of food. Big as it is, this General Electric upright freezer takes up only half the floor space of most comparable chest freezers. And its straight-line design gives your kitchen a true built-in appearance without the cost of building in. 
See your GE dealer soon and live better electrically with a new General Electric bookshelf freezer. Now, act two of A Question of Survival, starring Ronald Reagan and Kevin McCarthy. You got any chance at all? Good a chance as any of us. But if the boy dies? If town's lucky, Bull Hump will be so mad, he'll kill him quick. Otherwise, he don't figure to get much worse than any of us. There he is now. I need Reynolds to interpret again. How does it look, Towns? Have we got a chance? I think so. You don't look so good to me. You get the bullet? No. There was no use. Pierced his lung. And Doc. That'll mean the end of all of us. I don't show anything. I can't stop the bleeding. But I managed to force some alcohol down him, and he's going to look better in a few minutes. Now, there isn't much time. I want you to tell Bullhump exactly what I tell you. All right. Tell him that his son is going to live. Tell him that uh, he's just sleeping now, that before three sun rises, he will walk again. Tell him. too long. I knew he couldn't do it. I shouldn't have let him try. Crazy fool. You know, he really believed that stuff, Taney, about treating the Indians with kindness. I don't know. Maybe he's right. Maybe he'll prove it. I don't know. Captain, it's him again. And Reynolds. He's cutting them loose. He did it, Taney. He did it. Sergeant Slattery. Get some men. Help the patrol inside. They're coming. Yes, sir, Captain. You men open up that gate. Corporal, break out some rations for these boys. He did it, Taney. Towns did it. You better be ready for an attack pretty quick, just the same time. Yes, you're right. Corporal, close double sentry. Now, with Gill and his men, we'll be able to stand them off now. have a chance, sir. They were almost before we knew it. What you see here is all that's left. Uh, we got some of you back. And we've still got the fort. I guess we can thank Towns for that. Yes, where is he? Towns! He's not here, Captain. What? He stayed with Bull Hump. It was the only way Bull Hump would let us go if Doc agreed to stay with the boy. Even then, we had at it a long time before he finally would let us go. Why? The boy's going to be all right. He isn't going to be all right. Towns told me the boy will die 
Sometime tonight or tomorrow. He said to tell you, sir, that you were right. He said to tell you that face to face with an enemy, it's not a question of right or wrong, it's who will survive. Captain! Leave him be, Lieutenant. I'd like to thank Kevin McCarthy and the rest of our excellent cast. It was a pleasure working with them. I'm wearing another cap these days, too. One of a submarine commander in the United States Navy. I wear it in my new picture, Hellcats of the Navy, made for Charles Schneer over at Columbia. I think you'll enjoy it. In a moment, a word about next week's star and story, but first, let's see how the General Electric filter flow washer handles a bear of a problem. Teddy bears! Nylon shirts. Those different fabrics in your family wash need different care, and this washer can give it. The exciting new 1957 General Electric Filter Flow Washer with two wash speeds and two spin speeds. You simply select the right wash speed and the right spin speed for the type of fabric you're washing. Heavy denims, delicate things, all types of fabrics. Wool blankets, for instance, need slow, gentle washing. Then a normal spin to remove excess water. Nylon shirts need normal washing to get thoroughly clean, slow spin to avoid setting wrinkles. And this washer has GE's famous filter flow washing system. That means clean, bright clothes with no lint fuzz. See the great new 1957 General Electric filter flow washer and matching GE dryer at your General Electric dealers. Next week, the General Electric Theater stars George Sanders in The Man Who Inherited Everything. A most unusual story with an ending that will surprise you. Until next week, then, good night for General Electric, where progress in products goes hand in hand with progress in the human values that enrich the lives of us all. That's why, at General Electric, progress is our most important product.